As paper crafters, we love scissors. <laughs> we need them. They're essential to our craft. And maybe we're not quite as next level as sewists, who if you use their fabric scissors on anything but fabric will come for you. We love them. So I want to explore how you can find the best detail scissor because I honestly think as a paper crafter, a detail scissor is essential. And if you have a good one, it will change your crafting because you will be so much happier and opened up to some new techniques and less frustration. Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm here to help you make the most of your crafty supplies and time. So let's take a look. As you can see, I have plenty of scissors some of these are obviously not detail scissors or aren't going to be good for that. And there's some repeats because I like to have multiples of ones I really like. And these are not even all of the scissors that are in my house, as crazy as it is. These Tim Holtz scissors are super, super awesome for making big cuts, but they're not going to work for our detail scissors today. This is a scissor that um, has been like passed down from my mom because even though it's not non-stick, it actually doesn't. I can cut like really sticky tape with it and it works great. I wish I could even link you that like because if I could buy another one, I would. But that's like that's my scissor that I protect above all others. But let's focus on the detail scissors. All of these would be great candidates. There are three pairs of cutter piece scissors. And that's because ultimately short, you know, like to keep it short and simple, that's my favorite. If I had to pick only one set of detail scissors, it would be cutter piece. But there are some other good options out there. And I did want to share what makes a good detail scissor in case you don't have access to these. Or if, I mean, they're, they're just under $10. So they're very inexpensive, at least last time I bought them. Um, and I also want to share a tip for what to do if you don't get perfect cuts, like how you can kind of fix that, and then sharing some options because I do know these are kind of tiny in terms of their handle. First up, I wanna look at these scrapbook.com scissors. These often come as freebies and they can be good for many things because they are super sharp, but they're not great detail scissors and I wanna talk about why. And you know I love scrapbook.com, so I'm not, uh, knocking that, just that these, because they have these thick blades, oh, I forgot, I gotta look at it, but be very careful not to make it jump in and out of focus. Because they have these thick blades, it is really hard to get around corners. And I always move the paper, and I know tips and tricks that make it easy, but as you see, I had to like fold up that ear, kind of crinkle my paper to get around. So, the reason I want to show you this is because I want to be clear that it's not something as simple as any scissor with a small blade is automatically a fussy cutting scissor. And you might have thought that, and you might think you're bad at fussy cutting. That's not the truth. Here is a pair of Fiskar scissors. They have a bit more of an angle to them, so even though their blades are kind of thick, they are a little bit easier to get into spaces because of that angling on the blade. They do not have a super fine tip, but honestly, if I didn't, if I couldn't get cutter bees, I would buy these again. They are pretty good quality, and again, that non-stick. So if you like to cut things with adhesive already attached on the back, these are a great solution. These Westcott scissors are similar to the scrapbook.coms in just that they're just a little too clunky. So while they are super sharp, I'd consider them so-so. I do like them a little bit better than the scrapbook.coms, but I would never choose them over several other options. I just wanted to share a few options with you too because again, everybody has different things available to them and you might have different scissors in your stash. So this is just me doing the work for you, hopefully, if you hadn't found a pair that you love. These are from the Dollar Tree and they really surprised me in terms of their quality. I, would, I wouldn't choose them over Cutter Bees and they aren't that much less expensive. Like I said, Cutter Bees are less than $10 but they actually worked a little bit better than some of the other scissors that I got. And if you were like really in a pinch or on a budget or like you wanted a really inexpensive pair to take traveling because you didn't want to lose it because you know they do take them at the airport if they're under, if they're over a certain amount. And none of these qualify because I think it's like 
four and a half inches or something. I don't know. But anyway, if you want a really inexpensive pair, they do work okay, surprisingly. These next few I wanted to test because of their bigger handles. These are the Tonic Tim Holtz Haberdashery Scissors, which I think means that they are supposed to be for like cutting fabric. And so um, if you sew and cut fabric, uh, close your eyes, skip this part because I'm using fabric scissors on paper. Um, but they have a little bit bigger of a handle. They have a small blade so they easily get around the corners. They work, you know, not quite as good as the cutter bees, but they're pretty good if you wanted something with a bigger handle, like if a big handle was important to you. And the other thing is I'm going to show you the other set of Tim Holtz in a second, which do have bigger handles even, but they are serrated. These are not serrated. These are straight blades. So if you want something with bigger handles that has a straight blade to cut, I would think about the haberdashery uh, scissors from Tim Holtz because they have the ability to do the detail without the slight variation that a serration offers. Right. So here are the Tim Holtz scissors. These, like I said, are serrated, which means they have the little bumps on the edge and they do leave a little bit of texture behind in your cutting. A couple things I want to point out about that. If you are cutting something with thicker lines, like this stamp from Lawn Fawn, you probably won't even notice the serration because it'll be hidden by the black edge. And if you do not love fussy cutting, or if you find fussy cutting challenging, you probably want to stick with brands that have these thicker lines so that when you do have to do the cutting, it's a lot easier. Lawn Fawn has super thick lines around their stamps, which I like for many reasons. I think it adds to kind of the overall cuteness. There are companies out there who have much, much thinner lined stamps and they're also adorable, but they're gonna be much more challenging to fussy cut. And I just wanna point that out because again, I don't want you to think that you are bad at fussy cutting because of the particular tool or product that you're using. It's, it's sometimes, things are just some more challenging. Certain scissors aren't as good. Certain stamps are harder to cut. All right, here's my all-time favorites. I didn't actually save very much detail cutting. I'll have to get around to the edge there. But there are non-stick versions of this scissor as well. I have used these scissors for more than 10 years for fussy cutting. I have fussy cut during all of those 10 years because at first I was on a really strict budget and could not afford dies to go with my stamps. And then I just got so used to fussy cutting that I was often willing to fussy cut or use my brother's scan and cut instead. Um, so yeah, I have plenty of experience. I've been very happy with these. I had a pair that lasted 10 years. Before it started getting a little bit loose, it still absolutely worked. But because it was getting a little bit loose, I decided to replace it. I think, again, at the price of under $10, replacing it every 10 years, very reasonable. A dollar a year for high quality scissors. Yeah. Um, and then I have multiples because I like to sometimes fussy cut on the go and I don't want to take the scissors that are in my craft room. And then, uh, so I like to kind of just have a pair to leave with my to-go projects. It's nice to have a non-stick pair. If you're only going to get one, I would say just get the non-stick. Um, be careful, you can't, like, don't ever try to clean your non-stick with alcohol because it will wipe away the non-stick coating. Ask me how I know. <laughs> because it, um... Yeah, but like, also I had a pair that someone used for non-paper purposes and it did bend the tip of the scissor, but they still work perfectly and they do have a very pointy end to them, which not all of the scissors that I looked at did. And that might be a feature or a bug. It kind of depends. Like some people do like a duller tip, so they're a little bit less likely to poke themselves or something. But the main focus of this video is fussy cutting. I wanted to talk about what you can do when you get some imperfections, such as the little bit of white space that's left around this critter. I'm trying to hold my finger behind it so you can kind of see those little white bits sticking out. You could take a brush pen. This is a pit artist pen and you can trace around the image. This will give it a more finished and complete look. You can do this even when you don't have those white areas because the edge of the cardstock will still be white and it makes everything look just a tiny bit more finished overall. 
You can also get Pit Artist pens in a variety of colors, including brown, if that is one that like, if you frequently stamp in black and brown, it's great to have both. Make sure you get the brush tip that is easiest to um, manipulate around the edges. In summary, if you think you're bad at fussy cutting, it might not be you. It might be the scissor, it might be the stamp, and you might not like it and that's totally fine too. I'm not trying to tell anyone they have to be a fussy cutter. But if you want to try a new scissor because you think you've been having some frustration, try out the cutter bees, unless you think that these are too small and they're, therefore they're uncomfortable because that's also not fun. You're not gonna like fussy cutting if you have to put your fingers in the tiny holes. Maybe you try the haberdashery scissors for a little bit bigger of a handle or if you need the really big handle, I do think that even with the serration, these Tim Holtz scissors are great. I hope you found this video helpful. Here's another video where you can find more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. Let me know you like this video with a share to your crafty community. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next template or tutorial and check the video description for product links. See you in the next video.